All right, for those of you that are following the uh, little C10 build, 83 square body, uh, these are the brakes that I'm fixing to put on it today. Uh, just gonna walk you through. Uh, drilled and slotted rotors, uh, of course the new bearings, wheelwood calipers, uh, and all the necessary brackets with the uh, stainless steel brake lines. I am still waiting on a set of brackets for the uh, front calipers uh, that aren't here yet. And uh, so we'll get those hung a little later. So uh, let's get these parts. Let's put some uh, grease in the bearings and put the bearings in, seals, and start putting these uh, sweet little brakes on. I'll uh, have some descriptions below where all the parts came from in case any of you guys are looking uh, for a uh, really nice brake kit. Uh, this should do the job and uh, really stop this truck. So let's get started. Well, fellers, all I got is Ford Lincoln Mercury grease going in a GM. Don't tell nobody, okay? Ford Lincoln Mercury in a Chevy. Folks, when you're packing your wheel bearings, you just want to get you some in your palm and you want to pinch off just a little bit in that crack that's in the back right there. And eventually, you're going to see it pop out the top right here. And then you're going to see it pop out the sides of the bearings. There you got a good packed bearing. And you want to make sure these things are packed really good. Never put these things in dry or just smear grease on the outside of them. Because... Uh, I guess I'll be stopping and helping you on the side of the road because you're sure enough going to heat that bad boy up and not make it to the ice cream shop. So anyway, let me get this mess, all this stuff packed in here. And uh, we're going to get these uh, front rotors on and then we're going to move to the back. All right. Sometimes these are hard to go in. Sometimes they're not. Best to just go ahead and uh, go all the way around real gentle. Make sure that bearing is in right. If you don't go all the way around a little at a time, then uh, you'll find it jammed up in here crossways. You don't want to hit it too hard. I'm just barely tapping it down too far on this side and up too far on this side so we'll uh, start over with it all right this one's got it and you hear it ringing loud like that 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 means the seal was even with the the rotor. You don't want to not seat this. Uh, I have seen guys that have uh, put it in and then they think that they're going to tighten up that spindle nut and it's going to press that in straight because they can't get it walked in. That's not good. Because, uh, you're crushing this and you don't know it. All right, so we got that one done. Let's move on to the next one. Guys, we'll make sure these aren't upside down either. All right, got that done. The front ones go in after we get it up on the spindles and then uh, we'll put the rest of it back together. to usually put a, a little bit of this uh, wheel bearing grease on the spindle. You know, one thing, it helps it glide it up there a little bit better. And then, uh, I guess it might help it keep it from rusting if water gets in there. But if water gets in there, you probably got other trouble too. 
So uh, anyway, let's slide this uh, rotor on here. Make sure that it's got the right bearing. Of course, if it don't, then it's not gonna slide on there. Make sure the seal is seated and good snug fit. I'm gonna put the uh, front wheel bearing on. It's packed in there really good. Now, it doesn't get a seal on the front. Of course, you know it has the uh, dust cover that goes on. But it does have a special washer that goes on and the castle nut. And then you always want to try to put new cotter pans in, not the ones that have already been bent a couple of times. And there you go. I am waiting on uh, some brackets for the front and uh, we'll replace those brackets so that the uh, wheelwood calipers will go on and uh, now let's do the other side all right we got the uh, passenger side done now we got to do the driver's side Got a little bit of grease on it. And got it seated up on there. And where's the bearing? I guess I shouldn't took my gloves off. That's all right. This stuff tastes pretty good. Forgot to put the washer on because it's over on top of the toolbox. So I need to go do that now. Be right back. All right, so uh, my camera battery died, so I'm gonna have to bring you up to speed. We gotta remove the stock drum backing plates. And to do that, you have to open your, your diff housing, drain your fluid, your oil, and on the side right here, you'll find a 5 16 Take that off, it's a long bolt. There's a pin right here. This is the pin that goes in there, and your, the bolt that you're removing actually slides in there to keep the pin from coming out. When you slide this pin out, you can press your axles in and get your C-clips out. Your C-clips will be right inside where your uh, spider gears are at. Push the axle in just a little bit and this clip will fall out, but you need to make sure you catch it with that, like a, that shop rag I've got in there. It caught it to keep it from falling in my oil. So there's one of those on each side. Once you get the C-clips out, your axles will slide out. Once your axles are out, you can uh, remove the four bolts on the rear end flange and that'll take off your drum brakes. Once your drum brakes are off, go to your kit and uh, get your uh, plates that come with the kit, caliper brackets and Follow the instructions, bolt those on, slide your axles back in. All right, so uh, as you just saw, I got the uh, axles back in. I got the uh, C-clips back in. And that's ready to button back up. I've got to go get a gasket for it. And now let's put on the uh, rear disc brackets, caliper brackets, and uh, see what's next. All right, so uh, 
All right, so here we go. Let's, uh, we're gonna put this uh, bracket on. Comes with a spacer, the caliper bracket, and a bracket to uh, remount your emergency brake. Brackets in one hole. All right, so we get these brackets on both sides, and then we're able to put our calipers on. And then we're able to slide these rotors on after we get the calipers on. All right, let's do the other side. Hey guys. Well, uh, you saw I was working on the chassis for the C10 and I got the axles and stuff back in and now I need to go uh, run down to the parts store and grab a gasket for the uh, third member. I tell you, it's not very fun at all. <clears throat> but uh, while I'm doing this, I'll tell you a little story. Yesterday was Father's Day and I hope everybody out there uh, that's a father had a great day. And uh, I cut the grass. Belt broke on the riding lawnmower. Had to go get a new belt. <laughs> Super hot outside. Wasn't very fun. But at the same time, I ran over some of my wife's flowers. I ran over some of my wife's flowers. She's told me a hundred times, watch out. She's been babying that one for a while. I'm trying to get it back together for her. I tell you. Sometimes you just screw up and there's nothing you can do about it. But speaking of screwing up, take your time when you're getting these gaskets off. Don't use a grinder. Don't use a sander. All you're going to do is create leaks. Be patient, lube it down, and uh, get you a flat chisel. So anyway, I got to run down there and get that gasket. I might need to get some miracle Grow for the flower too. Or I might need to get a dozen roses. So, uh, anyway, let me get back at it, and I'll uh, show you guys some more shortly. <clears throat> All right, back from the store. Got my gear oil, got my gasket on, and getting ready to put the gear oil in, but I'm going to let that gasket set up a little bit, start cleaning up a little bit of my mess. Four-wheel disc brakes, guys, on a little square body C10. Now I've got to pick out some wheels. You got any uh, choices, please let me know. The paint job is gonna be real similar to the stock style. The paint job is gonna be real similar to the stock style design with a little bit of a modern twist and the color choices uh, haven't been decided yet. So if you have any ideas on that, let me know. Uh, I am kind of an earth tone guy. So uh, with that in mind, let me know what you think. Creams, browns, uh, gold, you know, Okay, gold is an earth tone. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let me get back at this. I'm gonna let that gasket set up a little bit. Then we're gonna put the uh, gear oil in and uh, get the emergency brake set up and button up uh, the rear. All right, so uh, this little uh, rear disc emergency brake kit is really nice for this truck. Pairs up really well with this Ride Tech. It's gonna be a really neat little street truck. Yeah, I know they're not 13 inch, 14 inch rear disc, but they're not four or $5,000 worth of brakes either. Let's go up front and see what we got up here. Everything's drilled and slotted. So when you get those brackets in, we'll get those put on and then uh, this thing will be rolling again and I can drop the LS back in it get everything wired up, plumbed up, juiced up. So, 
You like those square body C10s? You want to see a neat one coming together? Then uh, hit that subscribe button so you can follow along and keep updated with us. All right, so one last little update on uh, the rear disc brakes that are now complete. All I've got, I've got a new rubber line ordered for that, which uh, I'll install and then I'll run new steel brake line over to the uh, stainless steel braided brake line, which goes to the caliper. The uh, factory emergency brake cables are gonna work fine. Uh, there's some adjustment that still needs to be made right there. And when the uh, motor and transmission are back in, I'll be able to uh, adjust these cables, but that's gonna work really good. That's gonna save us some money right there on this budget. And uh, guys, this is really, I'm always looking out for you and myself anytime I'm doing something. And this is a very, very, very well built kit to put four wheel disc brakes on just about any Chevy truck. So uh, if you're in that project, uh, send me a message. I'll be more than happy to share all this with you. When I figure out how to put all that stuff in the links, I'll do that. And that way you don't even have to message me. You just click on the link. But uh, I'll figure that out one of these days. But anyway, like I said, the front disc brakes are done. Other than installing the calipers. And I'll do that as soon as those brackets show up. And then on the motor and transmission go back in. I'll be able to hook the front shocks up. And really, I've got some suspension parts ordered for the front. All my tie rod ends and stuff like that. Uh, when all that gets here uh, and we finish plumbing the brake system, uh, this little chassis is going to be done with the help of you guys. Let me know what you think. All right, so all I got left to do is to uh, put these front calipers on, hook up my braided lines, put new lines on the frame. It'll be complete a complete four disc brake kit. So we're waiting on the brackets for these. We're gonna have to catch those in another video. Uh, they've been on order for about a month now. And they keep telling me any day, but they've been telling me any day since they got my card number. So anyway, with that said, we're done for now. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the disc brake setup for the Chevy truck. Uh, really, really, really neat kit easy to install and I hope it works as well as it looks. So anyway, uh, after you get through watching this video, if you've got a project, get out in the garage and go build something. Thanks for watching.